So, Mr. Morozov, thank you for your time. Uh, later today, you will host a session with the topic whether data ownership will be the main political issue to solve in the future. So, what is your personal answer to that? Well, my answer is that yes, it will be. I mean, we're living in a time when it's obvious that uh, there are a lot of very interesting processes like automation that are happening in our society, not just in the economy, but also in how our political structures work. And it's also obvious that a lot of wealth is being created. If you look at top 10 firms by market capitalization now, and compare that to 10 years ago, you would see that top five positions are dominated by technology firms. Right? And uh, many of them are not even making a lot of profit, like Amazon. So there are a lot of expectations built into the market that they will continue dominating and expanding, entering more services, entering services outside of the traditional domain. So they'll be entering not just advertising, which they already are present in, but also health, transportation, energy, and so forth. A lot of that triggered and powered by data. And the question that I would like to ask is to what extent the revolution in artificial intelligence over the last five or ten years is actually powered by the ability of those firms to extract data, use it, and then come up with artificial intelligence, and to what extent that creates political problems. Because clearly a lot of that wealth is not very equally distributed. And as people start losing more and more jobs to automation, that will become a very important political issue of today. And so what what would be the, the best approach to solve this? So so who is to blame? Is it is it us people who who generate or use these apps uh, mm -hmm. created by those uh, companies um, and like giving them data with the hope mm -hmm. uh, in return to perfectly tailored content on Facebook, for example, or is it the companies that mm -hmm. like Facebook who take advantage of it, or is sure. it the VCs who? Mm -hmm make it even like possible in mm -hmm. the first place? Well, to some extent, everybody is at fault. I mean, I don't want to say that, you know, there is one particular group that's more guilty than others, but I would argue that you have to look at governments and you have to look at companies and you have to look at how some of the actions of governments, right? for example, the inability to continue maintaining the institutions of the welfare state have more or less pushed them into the arms of big companies that now promise to use a lot of data to revolutionize healthcare but to offer new forms of preventive health care, which draw on a lot of data. Right? So there is this push that's very much engineered, actually, by our own governments in many cases, that find themselves starved of resources, that suddenly find themselves in the, embrace, in the embraces of the tech industry. Uh, there are a lot of things that could be done about it. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. I mean, clearly, you could just direct property rights around data so that every piece of data will have a property right attached to it which would basically mean that anybody who would like to build an alternative project, an alternative form of artificial intelligence, imagine a public agency or a government wanting to do that, or a municipality or a city that would like to do that, they'll actually have to pay for data. I don't think that that's an ideal situation, especially when you have big firms that have already amassed so much of it. But you can also think about collective forms of ownership. You can think about collective forms of ownership of data that, again, at the level of the city, or the level of municipality can actually provide intelligent transport, intelligent energy services, and so forth. So you have to be able to experiment with different models that go beyond just the single focus on either surrendering all the data to companies or erecting a very strong uh, property regime that treats every data as a commodity by default. So you mentioned cities and, and also like distributed ownership of this data. So smart cities are also a big topic uh, coming up in, in a few cities, Barcelona, for example. Um, what, what do you think about that idea uh, from a city or a municipality to, sure. to create a smart, let's uh, call it smart mm -hmm. city? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually happen to live in Barcelona now, so I'm very close to the subject of uh, the smart city. I mean, in a sense, if you look at it from a purely abstract position, there is nothing wrong with cities being efficient in that they can generate energy efficiencies, they can operate transportation system that runs on time, they don't have to waste resources by dispatching buses to places where there are no people. I mean, of course, there are lots of ways in which cities can be far more efficient than they have been traditionally. Uh, however, up until now, the smart city paradigm, so to say, has also been sold as something else entirely. It has more or less become a euphemism for uh, some kind of uh, almost uh, closeted privatization. So you have more and more companies coming in and basically taking over the running of a lot of services that previously used to run on a different model. They were run by the city, or they were run by municipal companies. They were actually responsible to the city and owned by the city. Now a lot of those services are being farmed out to big technology firms. Increasingly you see companies like Google coming up with their own services. 
Uh, of course, the question of data, as I have been pointing out, has not been resolved. So essentially, the provision of those services results in even more and more data being extracted. So I think uh, there is nothing to fear in the idea of the smart city as such, but we clearly need to understand the political economy behind it. And the political economy of the smart city as it exists today does not favor the rights of the citizens and the inhabitants of the actual city. So yeah, I think we can conclude that the, this question you will uh, uh, host in your session will be the key question in the future for, for governments. So thank you for your insights sure. and uh, right. have a nice day. My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.